All right. Uh, hopefully everyone can see uh, the presentation here. So this information send, uh, session is meant to just uh, reiterate a lot of the key uh, facts as well as provide a bit of a question and, and answer session uh, for any, any questions that you might have about uh, applying as well as the program for the 2021 Civic Scholars Program here at the Graham Center. Broadly, uh, this upcoming spring uh, 2021 scholars will be looking at issues related to public health in Florida. Uh, we obviously are going to uncover that a bit more uh, as we get more uh, details. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're just going to go over some uh, important, important dates, important information about the program. I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mike Whalen. Uh, I'm the data fellow with uh, the Graham Center. And I'm also the project coordinator for uh, the Civic Scholars Program. All right, and any communication, any issues that you have about the program, um, please feel free to email me and I can answer those questions in depth. All right, uh, more specifically, if you're interested in the program, you know, here at the Graham Center, the Civic Scholars is a great undergraduate research opportunity. Right? There is really no experience necessary uh, to get uh, into the program or to be considered for the program. And that's because we want undergraduates to have a great sort of a, a chance to experience entry level research, right? doing some data collection, doing some training. And the way that this is set up is that we would like to send ideally uh, undergraduates to each of Florida's 67 counties uh, in order to interview key public health officials right, in each of those counties. And then each of that data, all those data from those interviews right, are gonna be brought back and put into uh, what's called Barometer Florida. And I'll go over that in just a second. Um, but the gist of the program is that you get a great experience doing some entry-level research, doing some data collection, and you hopefully gain a better understanding of some really critical issues in Florida. And, and as part of completing the program, Right. you'll get a $500 stipend upon completion. Right. So you must complete the uh, program, which is you know, one semester long in its totality. Uh, and we put an asterisk there uh, at, the, uh, at the end of that statement, because if you have any sort of outstanding fees to UF, um, they're going to appropriate that money first uh, to your UF fees. So there is a little bit of a caveat there, but generally this is a great opportunity to do paid research and get great undergraduate experience. Right. And you know, like I said, what's really required? Well, you don't need any research experience, you know, but we need you to be sort of obviously dedicated uh, to completing the project, doing those interviews for your county or counties uh, as it may work out. Um, and so we definitely need you to go and conduct those interviews in, in one or more Florida 67 counties. And also throughout the semester, there'll be roughly five to seven events. Uh, these will be lectures, uh, workshops, and most likely these will be held in the evenings for scheduling purposes. All right, so those uh, events are mandatory, and right? so we will be taking attendance at those at those meetings. Uh, but some of those events will also include uh, like a roundtable at the end, as well as a uh, as well as a orientation at the beginning of the program. All right? And as part of it, we ask that you submit a research report, all right? not a very long um, a report uh, at the end of the semester. Uh, this way, you know, we have documentation and then we'll have that physical data, which we can use then uh, to implement into Barometer Florida, which of course we'll talk about in just one second. All right? but, just to refocus here on, you know, what are some of the, the timelines that we're looking at? Well, if you haven't already put in an application, you should put in your application, make sure it's in before December 7th, all right, before midnight on December 7th, if you're interested in the program. Uh, we'll go through the applications over the course of about a week. And on December 14th, you should be notified about your uh, acceptance into the program. All right? And then at the beginning of next semester, all right, we will have a orientation on January 20th. And 
you know, we have been, you know, working to decide, you know, what are the possibilities of doing some of this in person and what are doing some of this online. You know, realistically, it sounds like we will be doing a majority of these events um, through uh, Zoom. So of course we will coordinating all of that over Zoom. Uh, if there is an opportunity uh, and if it's safe uh, to do, uh, you know, perhaps socially distanced or, or in-person meetings, um, we, you know, will of course contact you about that. Uh, but uh, realistically, this will, most of this research will be done uh, via Doom for safety reasons. Right? And then through the end of February, uh, sorry, the end of January, end of February and, and March, that's when we'll be, you know, training you essentially how to do these interviews, right? We'll have lots of guest lecturers on public health policy, and you know there'll be workshops about um, you know what to get out of your your interviews and, and how to you know best uh, communicate what you get out of these interviews. All right, and by April first, you really want your interviews with uh, with these public health officials to be completed. All right, and then by April twentieth, you know the reports will be due around midnight, which is at the end of the semester. And so, you know, what is sort of the broader scope of what you're contributing to? Well, we're in the process now of taking the data that we have from civic scholars, as well as a bunch of ancillary data from uh, you know, census, uh, as well as other uh, you know, public portals in Florida to create what's called Barometer Florida. Right? And the idea is that this will be an interactive data portal right, where people can get access to uh, the information that you've gleaned from your interviews and we'll bring data in from previous scholars on other issues uh, and we'll bring in a number of spatial and temporal data uh, specifically about public policy in Florida. And so this is a big data visualization project uh, that me and some others will be working on. Uh, and so all this data will be available via the Graham Center's Barometer Florida website. And the overall purpose of this is to track progress on critical issues in Florida. So we may be returning to public health issues in a few years to redo some of these interviews to see if things have changed. Um, there'll be a number of other uh, data that will you know, become available in that time. So the idea is that we can sort of do like a longitudinal study. So generally that's the, you know, sort of a microscope of the of the project broadly and then you know what that project will be contributing to as a whole um, and you know it won't just be me that you'll be communicating with um, you know we'll be working with uh, Dr. McCarthy from political science uh, Dr. Kogel uh, from the College of Medicine and and, and uh, with his real focus on public health policies uh, but also you'll be communicating with uh, a number of other uh, staff members such as uh, Dr. Jacobs, who's the uh, director here as well, as well as Marion Burnettson. So it's really a, it's a, a, a team effort. This is a big project and a, and a big opportunity. Uh, so I strongly suggest that you uh, apply. All right. So that is really it for, uh, in terms of, you know, the scope of the project. Uh, at this point, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, you know, ask them now. Uh, we have some previous uh, year scholars uh, in attendance, um, and you know, they can obviously help uh, answer any questions and maybe share some of their experiences uh, about the program. Uh, so I would like to, uh, you know, at this point, open up the open up the discussion here. If you have any questions. Hi, Aaron. You have a question. Hello. Um, I was wondering, what type of people are you looking for um, for, like, in terms of applicants? Good question. Uh, you know, right now we are, you know, obviously just just fielding applications. Uh, but ideally, you would be in, uh, you know, good academic standing. Uh, and you would have time available in the evenings to complete a number of the projects or a number of the events, sorry. Uh, but um, uh, specifically, we're, we're open to a, a, a number of people. Uh, and I think Megan here has, a, has, has also a, addressed that as well in terms of, um, you know, we're not just looking for, for one person, but we're looking for a, a number of people. Um, 
Does that answer your question? It's really more about, you know, do you, do you think that you have the time um, to, you know, to, to work on this? Because it is you know, sort of extracurricular in that sense. It's, it's not a uh, research credit course. It's something that you do in your spare time. And of course, down the line, you can use this on, you know, CVs and resumes and things of that nature. Um, but there, there is no, you know, credit attached to it. It's a, it's a volunteer, um, paid volunteer opportunity, essentially. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hey, doing good. How are you? Uh, so I wanted to ask you, is there any data visualization tools that are required or that uh, particularly you, you know will be using during the program? Well, the part that the, uh, the undergraduates and the interviews will be for are uh, simply just to collect the data. Um, if you're interested uh, in, you know, potentially, you know, taking this to the, you know, and you want to continue with this project and, and work uh, on the data biz part, um, certainly I think that uh, down the line we'll be opening that up uh, if that's something that you're interested in. But specifically for civic scholars, you don't need any um, you know, data visualization uh, background or anything like that. All right, thank you. Yeah. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. Sure. So I was wondering, are we more formulating um, the the scope of our research, like the the research question ourselves, or will we be more so look, seeking to kind of um, fill in the gaps of the of the broader research effort? Um, if you if you understand what I'm what I'm asking. Yes. So ideally, you know, we need each of those interviews to collect the you know the similar kinds of data. Um, so that way we can compare them per, per county. So it's important that we're all sort of unified in you know, the research question that we're gonna ask the specific kind of data that we're gonna get back. Um, so that way everything is very uniform in the end. So it won't be, um, it won't be like an, an individual case by case basis, it'll be uniform. So all the scholars will go out and uh, try to collect the same data to come back. Does that make sense? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I can answer Yesenia's question from the chat. She asked, like, she's a geology major, um, and if she could, like, approach it from, like, a climate change point of view. And you definitely could, like, climate change and public health are, like, linked together. It won't be, like, the focus of it. Um, like, you're definitely going to have some things that are just, like, public health, but you'll definitely be able to, like, intertwine that with, like, climate change, groundwater, and especially like, just like, the, they're, they're linked. Um, so I definitely think that you could do that. Yeah, we're, we're certainly looking to get a, you know, a, a uniform response, but your interviews will be what are called semi-structured interview, structured and semi-structured. So there will be a structured portion where we're looking to get specific kinds of questions or answers to questions back. Um, but there'll also be a semi-structured portion where, you know, that'll be where you can, you know, sort of incorporate other aspects and, uh, you know, ask questions that you feel are going to be more important for your report. So, you know, there'll be a component which will be very much uh, us getting back the specific details that we need but there'll be another portion, which is, um, you know, perhaps a little bit more, less structured, if that makes sense. <laughs> and thanks for, thanks for all the uh, previous scholars for showing up and, and helping answer in the, in the chat here. I was wondering if um, the previous scholars could talk more about like, their favorite parts of the program and maybe a little bit about the time commitment from their perspective. I suppose I can take that one. Um, well, last year's focus was climate change impacts and preparedness. Um, so what got me into the program is I do a lot of uh, sustainability and economic uh, studies. So that's what drew me to the program. And as Megan uh, pointed out, public health and climate are uh, very connected. So there's still a lot of uh, um, tasks to be completed with this year's research. Um, 
meeting the people was actually quite interesting because you don't you can do a lot of research and get a feel for the county, but until you talk to the people who, you know, either write the policies or are experiencing these effects, um, you don't really know. As for the time commitment, they don't do like deliverables throughout the semester. Um, we have those meetings, but those are more like to help out the scholars and like give them resources and kind of get an idea of the program. So it's kind of at your own pace. Um, but then as they said, like the interviews, they like to be completed a little early and then you uh, have your paper done by the April date. I guess I could um, touch upon it a little. Um, I also agree with Connor. I thought the most um, exciting and interesting part was actually, you know, it's on you as the civic scholar to go and look for the public officials or look for the nonprofits that coincide with what you are looking at. And it's your, you know, priority and your duty to get into contact with them and, you know, have a list of questions. I believe um, when we did it, we had a general list of questions. I don't know if There'll, there will be like a general list, but like we were, we had questions and then we built on more questions to ask them. And, you know, having that like conversation with them was really interesting hearing about what they had to say and hearing and giving them what, you know, you've researched, what you've found out as well. That was really interesting. And, you know, the time commitment, I also agree. It wasn't that bad. You know, you should definitely attend the meetings for not only like attendance purposes, but also for the most part, they will give you the websites and the resources that you need in order to find the data, the research, whatever that you need in order to like complete the narrative to the best of your ability. So definitely, I think like that was really fun for the most part. Um, for when I did it um, last semester, um, at first it was mandatory that you had to go in person and you had to fill out a um, uh, what's it called? Um, you had to like have them sign off and like let them know that they were allowed to like um, record you and such. But I don't know if that's gonna happen this semester with COVID near the end. As COVID happened, they no longer made that re requirement. So you were able to do phone calls, Zoom calls, whatever. So yeah, like for the most part, I believe we will probably be doing um, Zoom calls, phone calls, and you probably just have to get their consent give them a consent form, they'll fill that out. And then you have to ask them, you know, can I record you? If not, then, you know, you have to be ready to write. But for the most part, I think they're like fairly friendly and open to like, you know, having that narrative with you. Thanks so much again for, <laughs> Uh, for coming out and, and, and answering some of these questions. I was not a part of the program uh, last year, so this is my first time coordinating the program. Um, but so that's why it's so helpful to have last year's uh, scholars here. Uh, and obviously this year, safety is our, is our, our, big, uh, our, our big issue. Um, so we wanna make sure that you know, no, one, no one is gonna be exposed. Certainly, uh, I think right now it's pretty safe to say that you know, most of this will be done via Zoom which in a sense is, is maybe good in that, you know, there will be less traveling, you know, involved and you won't have to pay for that, but it is nice to be able to get those in-person uh, interviews. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Uh, yes, I do. So about the Civic Scholar Program, I, is it clear to more people I have like no experience in like in actual research? Because like for me, I'm second year, but like I never like thought about researching and I feel like this would be a good opportunity to like, like begin researching? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, we, you know, there, there is no experience necessary. And, and certainly part of the mission of the program is to get students who are interested in it, uh, or, you know, like yourself, like if you're interested in, in doing research and you want to try it out, um, and you, you might not have any experience, but you want that experience, you know, that's exactly what the point is, is to, is to you know, open that door, essentially, if that's something that, you, that you're interested in doing. Have, did any of the previous year scholars, did you have experience doing research coming in? And you know, if, you, if you didn't have experience, was it uh, an easy uh, transition or was it a good learning experience? 
Yeah, I actually didn't had like little to no research experience. This was that was actually my first one. And they give you like all the resources that you need. And it's like pretty straightforward. And I don't think it's intimidating at all. Like so long as you do your part and you don't leave everything to the last minute, you know, stay on schedule, make sure to, you know, look up questions, have people in mind that you want to interview and for the most part, like start drafting your narrative whenever you can and not leave it to the last minute. Like you should be fine. It was not hard and it was really like fun to do and like very interesting to learn about like your county and like the little like tidbits about it that are like unique to it and like for other people to like learn about. It was very interesting and not that hard at all. Yeah, I um, joined like I did it. I was a scholar two years ago and then I was a mentor last year and I had no research experience coming in. So it's definitely um, it's open to like everyone. Um, the point is like to help you get research experience so that you can maybe um, go further with it. But I mean, you don't even have to be going into research. It's really just a great opportunity, um, you know, get paid to do for like entry level research experience. That's not going to ha happen a lot. So um, if you haven't applied, you definitely should, no matter your experience. And um, also, since it's only eight to 10 pages, that's actually not very long for research. So this is a really good opening to go into that. And it's, if you like space out doing the report, it's not gonna take you long at all. It's really like, you'll learn a lot, but it's not intimidating. And I saw your question, you said like mentioned about mentor, like, so there's mentorship in this program? Yeah, so basically, um, last year there were seven mentors and we each took on about like seven to eight people. So you're not going to be alone in this. Um, you'll have a mentor assigned to you and we'll help you like go through um, your report. Um, basically, we'll be there to ask you questions. If you want someone to look over your report before you submit it, we could look it over. Um, you know, we'll probably be going into like breakout rooms or doing like whatever, either way with you for that. I just wanted to uh, track over some of the the questions that were were asked in the in the chat. Uh, I think a number of them were were, were answered, uh, but just to make sure that that everyone uh, has an idea, there were some good questions up here in terms of uh, Nicolas. How many counties uh, will be assigned to each student? Approximately, ideally, it would just be one. Um, you know, if we if we get enough applications, um, which I, you know I hope we will. Uh, if not. Uh, potentially, you know, we would open that up to where some people might have to do, you know, possibly a, a second one. Um, another student asked, uh, you know, about setting up uh, meetings with the public officials themselves. Uh, you will, but of course, we're here to help. You know, if you if you can't find someone to, you know, get this information from from a specific county or you're struggling, you know, the, the whole team at, here at the Graham Center, myself included, you know, are going to help you, uh, you know, contact somebody. Um, let's see a few others in here. Uh, of course, a Zoom, a Zoom call is, is probably going to be preferred. Uh, let's see, I think we asked, answered the one about the number of scholars. So ideally, that would be 67 scholars and then um, five to six uh, mentors, um, it would, I think is the ideal uh, numbers. And the mentors are uh, previous scholars who, you know, have experience in the program uh, and that can you know, help out. That's the, that's the general idea. Uh, in terms of you know, uh, an estimate of how many hours per week are we expected to dedicate to the program? Um, I don't know, previous scholars, what, what's a, what do you think is a, a safe number? Because uh, you know, I don't have any experience, so <laughs> you might, might have a better idea. I suppose it comes down to how proactive you want to be with it. Um, I mean, as we said, if you start early, you can branch it out across the entire sem like semester. Um, you can do if you want to start or break or whatever. Um, but pretty minimal, I would say. I mean, obviously, towards the end, as you're working on narrative, it takes more time 
and everything, but pretty manageable, to be honest. Thank you um, <laughs> again, because I I don't I don't have an idea of how long you guys worked last year. Um, you know, McKenna asked a great question about what uh, you know, would you be able to to pick your county, um, and I ideally everyone would get their own county, but uh, or their preferred county. However, re it's more realistic that you know we can't have everyone do Alachua County, uh, so you know those will you know probably have to be. Be, be broken up, but in the application this year, you know, I asked you to sort of rank your your top three, um, just so that way we have a, a good idea that if, you know, you wanted Alachua, but you can't do Alachua, you know, that maybe that second or third one will, will be available and, you know, you won't end up in you know, some county that you have no idea or, or, or don't want to do research. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, Sophia, you you will need to reapply, uh, you know, every year to to do the program. And normally the applications go out sometime in late October, early November. Um, and you know, usually we specifically uh, reach out to people who have done the program in the past to see if they want to reapply, um, you know, uh, if they had a good experience with it. Uh, let's see. Connor did a great job of, uh, you know, telling, you know, when in your report, we just want to see that you've, you know, tried to create some narrative um, and the reports, uh, I believe, do uh, become available on the, uh, on the, the Graham Center website, um, you know, in the future, you know, it might be possible to link those up with, with some other data. So that way, if people want to read your report, um, you know, we can make that more accessible. Uh, but yes, the reports, you know, do become public. So you want to, you know, Make sure that they that they're good and that and, and everything looks right. Um, uh, Nicholas, uh, let's see. I think you know Mikhail asked about previous research experience. Um, I think we we covered that. Uh, generally, I don't. You know, we'll, we'll have to see you know how com competitive it is this year. Uh, but you know, obviously, the more the more maybe you have experience doing something extracurricular. Um, the more, you know, if you're perhaps, you know, engage in public health some way, um, you know, those kinds of things will help set you apart. But um, I, I don't, I don't know right now. I don't think that the applications look, you know, you know horribly uh, competitive. And the idea is that we can, we draw, want to draw as many students from as many different backgrounds as possible. Uh, so you know, we're not, not really looking to necessarily uh, single anyone you know out at this point uh, but certainly you know having experience doing an extracurricular activity you know that you can make that time for it um, and that you have an interest in the in the program uh, is are, are really the the most important things um, cool. yeah so you, you know the the topics that we've been batting around you know like uh, We've been thinking about doing something related to uh, COVID-19, um, but it's still kind of early days, surprisingly, you know, and it, it there might not be a whole lot out there in terms of public health uh, response or public health preparedness at the time of doing interviews. Um, and also those will tend to vary greatly between uh, really densely populated counties like Miami-Dade versus you know, Franklin County or, or Jefferson County, right? Um, where perhaps, you know, that's, that's not necessarily on their agenda right now. Um, what we are thinking is uh, certainly an aspect of accessibility. So, you know, how many people per hospital, how are hospitals prepared to handle something, uh, you know, are counties prepared to handle, you know, potentially a rush of people all getting sick at once, right? So, issues related to healthcare accessibility and, and, and healthcare capacity. Um, but also we already do have, you know, epidemics in this country, which are related to things like obesity and, um, and the, uh, you know, the disease of addiction. So we're, you know, also interested in, in working with those topics as well. But we're still having to hammer out this idea. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Connor uh, asked about the or answered about the uh, the script. 
um, you know, we'll work with you on creating a script so that way there is some uniformity uh, in the responses, you know, because that that's what we need if we're going to do something like Barometer Florida, you know, we need to get a, a kind of uniform response from some of the interview questions so that way we can compare all that data across the state. Um, but in terms of, you know, those more semi-structured portions of the interview, that will be up to you. And um, uh, Cynthia Barnett has, uh, has uh, that's what's the word I'm looking for. Uh, she, she has said that she'll come back and, and workshop some of those uh, ideas with you as well. So there'll be a workshop with her. Um, yes. Let's see here. Uh, you know, right now in terms of uh, Anna Sophia asked about uh, focusing on a specific subpopulation within the county uh, in our research. Uh, certainly in your, the story that you want to tell, you know, I encourage you to, you know, perhaps look at that census block data, if that's something you're interested in, um, you know, to, uh, to kind of weave that into the narrative that you tell, uh, you know, right now, the barometer Florida, you know, data that we want to get back is kind of, is more at the county level. Uh, so that's kind of more broad, but certainly in your individual report, um, you know, you can go into those subpopulations for sure. Uh, in terms of when will the uh, the reports uh, become visualized, uh, you know, I'll be I will be working on that data uh, next semester, uh, primarily uh, bringing in some other census data to kind of tell a story with um, you know, uh, research from the previous scholars uh, and thinking of ways data that we need to you know uh, make make kind of a more rounded narrative for the Barometer Florida kind of uh, public health section that you'll see. And uh, I, I'd expect that by this time next year, that that, that data should, should become available, if not sooner, probably sometime over this over the summer. That's what I'm saying, but I also have my own research to do over the summer, so we'll see how that goes. All right. um, but uh, ideally, the, that would all be done um, uh, all of that would be done, yeah, hopefully by, by the end of the summer, I, I'd be on the visualization part. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in the data visualization part, uh, I do, you know, you know, reach out to me, uh, be happy to, to bring, bring you on and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, to help me work on that. If that's a, a part that you're interested in, if you want to get your hands dirty with some data, I'm always, you know, happy to, to, to bring you on. I can't, probably can't give you an extra $500, but I can, <laughs> but if that's the experience that you want and you want to do some, some in-depth work, um, that's for certain uh, something that we can talk about. Okay, did I miss anything? Is there any, uh, any, any, any questions? Mike, it's Marianne. There was a student who came in late and we had a private chat going just asking um, if you had to be a public health major. So just in case that question's out there for anyone else, um, I answered no. Of course, anyone can participate in the program. It's just the topic is public health this year. Correct. So. Yes. Okay, well. Uh, you know, feel free to, you know, stay on if you have you know, any lingering questions. Um, and of course, feel free to you know, email me. Uh, it's kind of a funny email. It's, it's kilgoretrout89 at ufl.edu. If you're a fan of Kurt Vonnegut, you might know, <laughs> you might know Kilgore Trout. But uh, yes, it's in there and be sure to, you know, get your applications in while you're thinking about it. And uh, feel free to, you know, email me any questions. Um, or, you know, if you want to reach out for a, a meeting, we can put on masks and, and do it safely outside and things of that nature. And thanks again to the uh, previous year's civic scholars for uh, coming and helping out. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Are we good to go? I don't know if anyone has any questions. Anyone? Yeah, you're one? you're free to free to 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 trickle out as uh, <laughs> if you got other things to do. I really appreciate you taking taking the time to uh, 
to show and help out. 